Warning, the following video contains adult language and strong opinions about pottery. It may not be suitable for small children. This isn't your mama's pottery class. Hello and welcome to How to Unfuck Your Pot. I am your host and instructor, Dominic Sperano of Sperano Arts. Today we're going to go over one of the most annoying things there is in pottery, and that's learning how to center on the wheel. Afterwards, I'm going to show you how to open up. I'm going to have, then I'm going to show you how to pull a nice cylinder, okay? And all the steps that go in between those things. That's what's coming up next on how to unfuck your pot. Okay. So we're going to take the piece of clay that I wedged up on the last video and we're going to put it right onto the bat and start the centering process. Centering essentially is a simple feat. All you really want to do is start pushing in and down. Now this is what's called the XY method and I have discussed it several times in previous daily tip videos. And basically I'm looking to just show you a good example of how to do this today. And what we're going to do is start with a loaded sponge of water. I like the good classic yellow sponge and I want it really wet, really wet so it can really uh, pour some down. I'm going to start a little slow and just push down from the top here and then a little in over here. Okay, so it's down and a little in from here. And as you can see, I'm starting to push my hand in a little bit and that's going to create a little bit of an, of an undercut. Okay, and this is going to be important. All right, so now I want to go full speed, pushing down, pushing in, down, and then squeeze. And I'm, as I squeeze, I'm just feeling for any sort of bumps and problems. And then I very gently just take my hands away. And there, and I have some centered clay. Like I said, not that hard. Now I see a lot of people teaching this coning thing where they kind of cone up and then they cone down and then they cone up. And then they come down, and they come up, and they come down. And quite frankly, I find it's one of the most annoying uh, forms of centering I've ever seen. Okay, and people that practice and teach coning, good for the, good for you. But I tend to get your students, and I find that they don't know what they're doing. So what's more important, I think, is that you learn how to center quickly and easily. And the quicker you learn how to center, the better things are going to be. Quite frankly, if you are worrying and like going up and down, up and down, up and down, you're really never going to get onto wheel throwing. So what I like about this method is that I can really use my body to make it work. If I need extra oomph, I tuck my arm deeper into my iliac crest over here. Okay? So that way all I gotta do is lean in. It's really easy for me to generate force. I don't have to use my arms so much. I don't have to use my shoulders so much. I just need to push in and then very gently down. And voila. See? Now I'll knock it off center. Just so you get a good idea here again of how to do this. Pushing in and just leaning in. That's all I gotta do. Just lean in. And down. This is what the key is here. This is how to make this happen. Okay. Now, the big mistake I see a lot of people make when they're centering is that they're taking their hands away way too quickly and easily. See what happens if I do that? It gets knocked off center. Take my hand away real fast. Boom, off center. What I want to do very easily. And gently relax the hands away. This is something else I know I've discussed this in videos. You just want to relax the hands away 
and then boom, see it stays centered, no problems. No problems whatsoever. Boom, easy, off, off. Nice and easy, very good, okay? Now, for larger amounts of clay, we're gonna come back to this piece of clay in a little while. For larger amounts of clay, you might need a little extra oomph to do that. And for that, I recommend taking your foot and putting it a little bit behind you so you can push off the floor and into the clay. I'll show you how to do that in one second. So we can agree this is a much bigger piece of clay, as you can see. Boom, here we go. What you want to do is push into the floor to get some extra oomph. All right, so if I need to create some extra power, see the positioning of my foot here, and all I'm doing is pushing into the floor and then into the clay. So you have my arm in the same spot, and I'm just pushing in, again, tucked in here, tucked into my rib cage, and I'm generating the power by where my foot is, and I'm pushing forward and into the, and into the clay. See? And by doing that, bam, I can center larger amounts of clay, and I'm not straining my muscles. That's the big thing, right? If I didn't do that and my foot was here, and I'm, my arms are in a bad position, I'm trying to do this. Man, that is a lot of stress on my joints. That's a lot of stress on my elbows. That's a lot of stress on my shoulders. What I want is just use my body weight. And bam, here we go. Centering the clay. Okay. Easy peasy, nice and centered, okay? So the next thing that I want to do after I've centered clay is I want to start opening up. There are a couple ways that you can open up, and these are the couple, this is the way that I like to do it, and I find it's pretty accurate to pull off. Okay, so if I'm gonna center the clay, this is how I can do it smoothly without really having to guess about it. Now, a lot of people show this, using your thumbs. I'm not a fan of using your thumbs, and I probably discussed this in a daily tip video. And the reason is I'm kind of limited. As I push down with my thumbs, I can only go about this deep, and I want to go deeper than that. And I want to, I can't really open it. I can do this, but and I can lift up a little bit, but after a while, I can't really do much more. Okay, so what I'll end up doing instead is I'm holding my left hand here and then I take my right hand, middle finger, and I find the center and I just push in. So I'm still centering and I curl like so and then I squeeze. And from here, I'm taking my fingers and I'm curling and then I'm pulling up. So now I've combined the opening with a pull. See? And all the while I'm continuing to center. And now I'm compressing very gently with my thumb and I take my hands away and boom. So I've opened up, pulled up, and compressed the rim in three steps I did in one motion. Again, I'll demonstrate it again. In, curl, pull, and press gently away. And now I have something that I'm ready to open up. Oh, I'm sorry, now I'm, I have something that I'm ready to pinch and pull up. Now when I pinch and pull up, here's what I'm doing. I'm taking my middle finger, my ring finger, and my thumb, putting the thumb down here, and pinching over here. Now this is a larger piece of clay, so I'm gonna switch to a smaller one so it's a little bit easier to see.
Okay, so here's another demonstration of opening up. Again, hand on the side, left hand. Now, if you are left-handed, you're going to be doing it like this. That's the thing you want to remember. You're going to be doing it like this if you're left-handed. I'm right-handed. I'm going to do it this way. Okay? If you're left-handed, don't do it this way. Do it left-handed way. All right? So I'm going to go down about one knuckle deep for a regular... And when I say regular, I mean size of my own fist piece of clay. Go about one knuckle deep. I pull in. Start pulling up. Take my thumb, a little bit of compression, nothing crazy. Gently take my hand away. Bam, opened up piece of clay, ready to go. Okay. Now I like mud sponges. I like a good mud sponge. These things are amazing. Highly recommend you buying them. I have no stake in the company. I've mentioned that before. These are just really good sponges. I'm going to hold in what I like to call the politician pose. Okay. Which is sort of like this. Pinching here and wrapping around. If you're gonna, if you have a basic sponge, basic circle yellow sponge, same thing. Pinch and hold like so. Okay. And see that nook, that uh, nook that I created before that I mentioned. This is where I'm going to start pinching up. I'm going to put my hand right over here. I'm going to take my middle finger, my ring finger. I'm going to put it on the inside, and my thumb is going to go into the nook. I'm going to put it right against here. See, so this is the motion that's happening coming up like so that's what I'm doing so what I'm going to do is put in here pinch and just one pull very gently and ease away okay not a lot happened not a lot should happen okay especially if you're a beginner incremental is the way to work you don't want to just try and like do everything in one shot do it again pinch and gently pull up See? Third time. Usually it's the third time that gets you the most results. And just gently relax as I get to the top. What's happening with my hand? I'm pinching, and as it's coming up, I'm releasing. So by the time I'm here, I'm like barely touching this thing. And then I just take my hand away. What's happening more importantly is with the dominant hand here, my right hand, I'm pushing in and I'm continuing to push in. And that's what's making this come up straight. This is how you get yourself a mug, cup, pencil holder, any of those things. And I'm really pushing in at the rim too. But I'm not going crazy. What's really happening with my hand is it's going this way. Slowly in. Boom. Slowly in. Okay. And I mentioned this in another video. I well, believe it was the daily tip in which I discussed the physics of creating a straight wall. This is going out this way, so my hand's coming in this way. Boom, I have a straight wall. Now, let's say I just want to keep this and turn this into a simple mug. All right. First of all, I'm just cleaning out whatever's on the inside over here. Boom. So that's nice and clean. What I'm going to do is push out maybe one more time. I'm going to switch to my mud tool, my mud sponge. I like this better. Okay, hand all the way at the base, slight push out, and then come up. And then a gentle release to the top, like you saw before. Now that I have this kind of straight, I'm going to work to my tools. I'm going to start. This is, you can tell I've used this tool a lot. You can see how small it is by comparison to one of the other ones. Right? See what I mean? See the difference in the size here? Whoop, slippery. See the difference in the size? So I've, I've used this tool a lot. I'm going to cut in. And see I'm bracing myself against here. And I'm just going to cut in and down. Boom. See? Nice little ring. And this is here. Here I'm going to go over the mantra. Hold it like a knife. See, I'm holding it like a knife. Cut in, turn here. Slowly slice away. Now I'm going to hold it like a pen. See? And God help you if you held a pen like this 
like this. This is how you hold a pen. This is non-negotiable. This is how you hold a pen. This is what I learned in Catholic school. I'm telling you, this is the way you hold a pen. Okay? Hold a pen, again, bracing against here. Nice little undercut. All right. Now I'm going to hold it again like a knife. Small undercut there. This is what I want. I want to work cleanly. Okay? Now I'm going to switch to the wood rib. Come on in. And straight on up. Okay? Boom. Nice and straight. Easy peasy. The last thing I want to do with this, if I can find that tool, I want to trim the top with the pin tool. Okay? Here's a nice little pin tool I got working over here. I'm just going to trim the rim a little bit because the rim is just a little weak. Nice little slice. There you go. Okay? And then from here, going straight to a chamois cloth for some compression. And I'm rounding out the chamois cloth. You can see how I'm just rolling it, holding it still. I have a really nice round rim, which is going to be really good for not chipping or breaking. I'm going to take out a little bit of water in the center. Now, I'm in my personal studio, and in this particular case, I would just leave this on the bat. But I also want to go over how to take this off a bat, okay? Because I see a lot of people doing it badly in the studios I work at, and I, I always try and correct this. It's a really simple thing to do. And under no circumstance do I ever recommend using pot lifters, by the way. Pot lifters, well, they suck. They warp more pots than they help. So I'm going to pull this over taut one time and come in and cut. And one more cut. See, I didn't even need that cut. Boom, it's already starting to move. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a loaded sponge full of water, squeeze it out over here, gently slide, come here and catch. And that's how I have a cylinder. Piece of clay that I was working on. I'm going to show you how to make a big cylinder now. It might go crazy. It might even make a ball. We don't know yet. All right, again, finger down here right at the base, okay? Thumb right over here, making a connection. See, I'm connecting to what I'm doing here. That's the important thing. Boom, touch, squeezing, pulling up. Nice and easy at the top. See, it's starting to give me some resistance, so I gently back the fingers away. Boom, okay? Big mistake I see a lot of beginners always doing, this thing. Well, now all you're doing is giving the clay a massage. You're kind of jerking the clay off. Don't do that, okay? You just want to come in and press and hold it. Hold it. Slowly work your way up and hold it. See what I mean? Easy. Relax. Hold it. Gently relax the fingers away as I get to the rim. A little bit of pressure. There you go. Okay? Again, I'm going to switch sponges again. Okay? Before I switch sponges, actually, let me get back in here. Clean up some of that water in the middle. It's kind of annoying. All right? What I like about this, I can really get in here with my finger now. Again, squeeze it. Applying a lot of pressure with my right hand. That's the key. A lot of pressure with the right hand, making sure it comes up. If I get to any wobbles, I just relax. Just really relax, and boom, here you go. Now, here's the thing about wobbles. People freak out that, that, that it's wobbling around a little bit or it's not still perfectly centered because you opened it up. Well, the moment you open it up, you fuck it up a little bit in terms of the centering, and that's perfectly okay. That's why I had you doing this. Okay, that helps counteract that. But the more you keep pulling, 
the more it's going to be a little off center. You can worry about it or you can just work on the stillness of your hands. And that's going to be the most important part of this. The stiller your hands are, the less the wobble. There's still going to be a bit of a wobble. I mean, you can look at this. You can tell there's a little wobble here. Perfectly fine. It's kind of like golf. I'm not a golfer, but I had to take it in college once. And here's the deal that I learned. Professional golfers hook and slice all the time. It's just that they're pros and where my hook and my slice is going this way. And by the way, I don't know which one's a hook and slice. I just know one goes this way and that way. Whereas being an amateur, mine's going to go on big tangents. Pros have tiny tangents. They have control over the mistake, right? That's what a professional potter does. We control the amount of mistake, right? It's not that there's not going to be some wobble. It's just I control the amount of wobble so you can barely notice it. What I then do is I go to my tools. I give this a quick trim. Nothing crazy. And I go back to using the wood rib. And I'm really pushing in with the wood rib and I'm really pushing in from the center outward. Okay. Now what you want to make sure you do is you're lifting up, keep your elbow tucked in as soon as you can tuck it in. The more you can anchor yourself to your thighs and your rib cage, the easier things will be. And what I can do here is use these tools to take the wobble and project it upward. See, it came up. So now it's here and from here, I'll use that pin tool that I had and I'll trim the top a little bit and get rid of that wobble. See, wobble, gone, boom, all right? And this is a really good jar, jar-like shape. You know, I'm not gonna really throw a top for it today. This is all about the basic steps. What I am gonna do is trim the base again. Trim here, okay, holding it, knife, pen. Knife. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give it a little extra. Really smooth it out. Okay. This is something I would say is like really good for a kitchen utensil. People love having something they can put all their wood spoons in. Okay, I'm gonna take this and again, round it out. Now you may be thinking to yourself, man, Dominic really left that really, really thick. I guess he's not that great at wheel throwing. No, I can make this thinner if I want to. I'm leaving it thick for two reasons. Number one, the lesson essentially is over. I've showed you how you can pull up. And number two, later on when it comes to trimming, I can use this to show you all the do's and don'ts of trimming. And the thickness is going to make it a lot easier. Plus, I want to show you how to carve stuff too. So thick isn't necessarily a bad thing. Okay, one thing you really got to realize, this is a first draft. If you're assuming that this is your finished piece already, you're setting yourself up for a whole lot of heartache that you don't need to set yourself up for it. Assume it's a draft. Assume it's a piece of raw clay sculpture. Okay, assume it's a primed canvas, if you will. You don't look at a primed white canvas and go like, well, it's done. No, there's a whole lot more to do. This is just the beginning of a shape. There's a lot more that I can do with this if I so choose. I can carve it, can shape it, can whack it, can manipulate it in other ways. You don't assume this is done. This is the first draft, okay? Draft number one, that's it. So we're gonna come back to this next week. I'm gonna show you how to trim these pieces and possibly how to carve them, all right? Thank you for watching this video. I hope the lesson helped you out, uh, answer any questions you might have. If you have any more questions or want to become uh, or get some more personal coaching from me, you can always go to my website, sperranoarts.com. 
Uh, I have some uh, ways that you can we can do some personal coaching, or you can become a patron of mine on Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash Sperano Arts. Either way, I'm hoping I, I've helped you out and you've learned something. And if I can help you any further, just drop me a line, get in touch, and let's see what we can do.